Hello, mind setters. Welcome to Learn Extra Metric Revision. Today we're looking at history, and the topic is the road to democracy. What we've done is we've selected a few questions and sources from the 2014 exemplar just to show you how to analyze sources and to answer questions in the exam. So what we'll do before we look at our sources, I'd like us to go through the checklist. So you need to make sure that you revise the relevant content and context for this topic. So in other words, you need to know everything that is related to the road to democracy in South Africa. You also need to know how to analyze different types of sources. So we'll be looking at different types of sources. In this case, just for today's lesson, we're looking at written sources, but they are obviously from different perspectives, as you will see. You also um, need to be able to construct a coherent argument for an extended writing question. So you will see later on that you will look at a paragraph question and we'll also look at essay writing. Okay, so before we look at our questions, as I said to you, we are going to read the source together and analyze it so that you know exactly how to analyze sources. Now let's read our source together. Source 1b. This account by Gobodo Madigizela focuses on the value of the TRC. So I'm going to quickly analyze this clue here or underline it because it tells you that the entire source will be looking at why the TRC was a good thing. So that when you're reading the source, the entire source, you'll be able to take out that information that points out the fact that the TRC was a valuable process. So remember, when you're analyzing your sources, it is very important to first read the caption because that caption tells you what the source is about before you even read the source. Now, we, know, we already know what the source is about. Let's carry on and read, and read it and look for things that are of value or that point to the value of the TRC. And so I think it is important to realize that sometimes there's a very thin line between history and reality. And what we're trying to do in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission is to make real that history. I'm going to analyze that as well because it shows you or tells you the reasons why the TRC came into being. They wanted to make the history real. And then she goes on to say, not to make it just an object of the past, but something that is real. So in other words, they want to confront the past by showing the people who are alive today who were affected by that past, to show that the past is part of our present. There's a lot of controversy about how the Truth Commission is embracing reconciliation. Okay, now that is another very important thing. Now, in your study of the TRC, you will already know that it is true that the TRC was surrounded by a lot of controversy. Some people agreed with it, others did not agree with it, but we already know that this particular source is looking at why the TRC was a valuable process. It, she does acknowledge the fact that there is controversy surrounding the TRC and reconciliation. However, she wants to point out the value of this whole process of the truth and reconciliation. So he, uh, she says, there's a lot of controversy about how the Truth Commission is embracing reconciliation and sacrificing justice. Okay, I'm going to quickly underline that. I'm going to use a different color now. So she's saying that some people argue that the TRC is only interested in embracing reconciliation, and by doing that, they are sacrificing justice. So not everyone is in agreement with the work of the TRC. So he's saying they're sacrificing justice for the truth. That is what they're interested in. They just want to find out the truth. And in the process of trying to find out the truth, they are sacrificing justice. And how, in fact, reconciliation is an embrace of evil. 
okay let's underline that as well let's use a different color now okay she is saying that reconciliation is an embrace of evil so we're going to look at the reasons why that claim is being made but being in the truth commission and having watched several victims walk up to the witness box and talk about their story I'm reminded every day how the way we define concepts such as justice, for example, the way we frame those definitions decides the conclusions we make about these concepts. So in other words, if you look at the source, she's saying that different people define justice in different ways. Some people will seek justice in terms of having the perpetrators punished for the deeds that committed or the wrongdoings of the apartheid times, while others just wanted to find out the truth. And to those people who just wanted the truth, then the TRC would have been of value. But those who wanted the perpetrators to be punished, then would have found the TRC a waste of time and also rehashing all the evils of the past. For example, the way we frame those definitions decides the conclusion we make about those concepts. Justice, as far as many victims who have come to the commissions are concerned, is something totally different from what someone who has not had the, that experience would define as justice. So it's what I've been saying before, that different people look at justice in different ways. So she is claiming here that those people who have stood before the TRC see justice in different terms to those people who have not stood before the TRC. And that could be partly because they were affected by apartheid in different ways. So they're seeking different things from the TRC anyway. So she's saying for those people who stood before the TRC, justice does not have the same meaning as those people who maybe were just watching the whole proceedings on TV. And then she carries on to say, I have been struck many times at the Truth Commission by how, in fact, victims look at justice as a validation or a confirmation of themselves. As a reaffirming or confirmation of themselves, something that tells them that you were right. You were right. The system that demonized or threatened you, the system that took away all that you had was wrong, but you were right. So in other words, she is referring to the apartheid system here. And she's saying that in some instances, what happened at the TRC hearings was that some people just wanted that validation, that confirmation to prove to South Africans and the whole world that they were right in their fight against the system and that the system itself, that is the apartheid system, was wrong. For some people, that is how they would define these concepts of justice and reconciliation. It was just to confirm that they were always right. And the opportunity for these victims to come and tell their stories, to talk about their loss and their pain. That is a very important thing as well, because that is what the TRC was about. In fact, the pain of silence about talking about the pain that is broken for the first time at the hearings of the Truth Commission is on its own sufficient validation for family members. So in other words, the, it, uh, what she's trying to say here is that for some people, being given the opportunity to come forward and just tell of their pain, of their suffering during the apartheid times is enough. They don't need anything more than that. Whereas the people watching on TV might think, well, we want the perpetrators to be punished. It's not good enough to just know the truth. And then she carries on to say, and that for me is superior to any quest for justice because that embodies justice in a very meaningful way. It is reparative justice. It is justice nonetheless. So that is very important. I'm quickly going to underline that as well. Okay, that whole sentence, it is reparative justice, it is justice nonetheless. So that emphasizes the point that she was making earlier on, that justice means different things to different people. 
For some people, it can mean just coming forward and telling their stories and finding out the truth about what happened to their loved ones or to them during the apartheid times, whereas the people watching would want something totally different. But we need to acknowledge that coming forward and expressing your pain and telling your story before the TRC, that should be viewed as justice as well. I hope that has helped you understand the source. Now let's look at the types of questions you are likely to get in an exam situation based on this source and your own knowledge. Because remember when we were looking at the checklist, I told you that it is important to understand the concepts but also the context. So make sure that you know everything about the theme. Okay, let's look at the questions now. The first question is, why according to the source? Now that is very important because it tells you that it, you are not using your own knowledge, but it's according to the source. So in other words, this question is testing whether, whether you've understood the source or not. So it is a comprehension question. Please make sure that if you get a question like this in an exam, you refer to the source because it says why, according to the source, was the TRC regarded as controversial. Now remember when we are analyzing the source, we did say that um, was looking at the value of the TRC, she did acknowledge the fact that it was controversial. And the reason was because some people viewed justice in different ways to those people who had stood before the TRC. Now let's look at the possible responses you are likely to come up with. Okay, remember I did underline this. It embraced reconciliation and sacrificed the truth for justice. So that is the straight extraction from the source. By extracting that information from the source, you are showing that you have understood what the source was about, and you could see cause and effect, because that is very important in history. Another possible response you can come up with is, the process of reconciliation embraced evil without taking into account the suffering and torment the families of the victims faced. And then it also says any other relevant response. So remember, we said it's content and context that are very important. So if you use the source and including your own context as well, provided that it is relevant, that answer will also be acceptable. And then let's move on to the next question. Comment on why you think Gabodio Matigizela stated that the TRC was an attempt to make real that history. Again, I'm going to underline that because I did underline it when we were analyzing our source that she was saying that the whole purpose of the TRC was to make history real. In other words, to make it come alive so that people could realize that it was not just about the past, but that the people who were affected by that past were people who were alive today. So it was making that connection between the past and the present. So you need to comment on why. Again, I'm going to underline that. So if you're asked to comment on why, you are giving the reasons. Why you think uh, Matigizela oh, stated that the TRC was an attempt to make real that history. So let's quickly look at the possible response there. It acknowledged the pain and suffering caused. So in other words, the pain and suffering caused during the apartheid times. It wanted to reveal the truth of the past events. So in other words, it's bringing the past to the present, as I said to you before. They acknowledge the injustices of the system of apartheid. So again, they're not just leaving the past in the past, but they're saying that we recognize the fact that the people who were affected by these injustices of the past are the people living today. So that is how the TRC sought to make real that history. And then the next question, still based on the same source, is explain what is implied by the statement, reconciliation is an embrace of evil. So now this is now testing your own understanding of context, historical concepts, and everything about the event. Okay, this is not 
found in the source. The response or the answer to this specific question is not found in the source, but it's testing your own, your application of your own knowledge in the context of the TRC. Explain what is implied by this statement, reconciliation is an embrace of evil. So now if you look at the possible responses there, to forgive perpetrators without first establishing the extent of the uh, human rights violations that the victims experienced. So in other words, that is what um, Gabodia Matigizela was saying, that some people claimed that reconciliation was embracing evil by just forgiving perpetrators without first establishing the extent of human rights violations that the victims of apartheid experienced. Acceptance of verbal testimony as the truth without corroborating the evidence. That is very, very important because that is another thing that led to the TRC being a controversial process because they didn't need to hear from a lot of witnesses. So one person, a perpetrator, could come forward or even the victim and tell their story and that story would then be accepted as the truth. Come to terms with the evil that caused the hurt. So in other words, accept it and move forward because that was the whole purpose of the TRC. It was for the country to move forward, to reconcile the different groups in South Africa. So that is what is meant by that um, reconciliation is an embrace of evil, that the perpetrators were not going to be punished for what they had done during the apartheid times, but what was important was for the country to move forward, was for the people to find out the truth about what had happened. And then the next question is, define the concept justice in your own words. Okay, I'm going to quickly underline that. It's very important you are doing this in your own words. So even if the definition is found in the source, you are expected to give your own definition. You're doing this in your own words. Again, this is to show your understanding of the concept justice. Now remember, I did stress again when we were looking at the checklist that it was important to understand the concepts and the context related to the specific theme that you are preparing for the exams. Now let's look at the possible response there. Matters that are dealt with uh, fairness, honesty, and integrity. And it does allow for any other relevant response. So in other words, you can just say what or how you understand justice to be, but as long as it is relevant. Okay, because remember you're doing this in your own words. And then if we move on to the last question on this source, Explain to what extent Gabote Matizela's assertion that the TRC was able to attain justice can be regarded as valid. I'm going to read that again. It's a very important question. Explain to what extent. If you get a question saying to what extent, that means that they are leaving room for you to debate the issue. So you can say yes to some extent and give reasons and, say, and then give reasons why there can be shortfalls with that assertion as well. Okay. Or you can just choose that it was to a large extent period. So it's up to you and how you have understood the source. Explain to what extent Gabote Matigizela's assertion that the TRC was able to attain justice can be regarded as valid. Now, this question is already telling you that the, this assertion that the TRC was able to attain justice should be regarded as valid. So that is what you need to look at. Is it, is it valid or not? The TRC acknowledged the apartheid system was wrong. Okay, that is very important, that even though it was controversial, it did not deny the fact that apartheid was wrong and that a lot of people were affected by this system. The TRC highlighted violation of human rights. Again, that's another thing that the TRC highlighted, that people's human rights were violated. So even though she is saying uh, in the source that we analyzed earlier on that the TRC was of value, she is not denying the fact that people did suffer under apartheid. And the TRC did not deny that. So that is the reason why this assertion that the TRC was able to attain justice is valid. 
the TRC acknowledged the victim's pain and suffering. This ties in with the previous point about the TRC highlighting the violation of human rights. The TRC broke the silence and allowed the truth to be told and heard. So that's another very important thing, that for a long time there was this silence where people did not know what had happened to their loved ones or who was behind the atrocities that had been committed during the apartheid times. So the TRC was able to reveal all that information. So that is all you need to know for now. We're going to take a short commercial break and when we come back we're going to look at another written source which is slightly different from the one we've analyzed and then look at the questions based on that source as well. I'll see you in a few minutes. Welcome back. Now remember before the break we looked at the written source written by somebody who was involved in the TRC. We are now looking at another written source, but this one is a testimony by somebody who was affected by apartheid. So she came forward before the TRC to give her testimony. So again, it's very important to analyze the caption that is found at the top of the source in order to understand what the source is about. So let's read the source together and we're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to underline the relevant information that is going to help your understanding. Okay, I'm going to quickly underline that this is a testimony by Nonle Muhapi was made at the TRC hearings in East London in 1996. Okay, this is very important because it tells you that this is a primary source. So now this person uh, appeared before the TRC in 1996 but what, what was she doing before the TRC? She was looking back at her past and how she was affected. That is the testimony she was giving. Let's read it together. In 1976, I was widowed. I became a widow of the apartheid regime. That is very important. I'm going to use a different color to underline it. She says, I became a widow of the apartheid regime. That tells you that she is blaming the apartheid government for the death of her husband. When the TRC began, I was skeptical or doubtful, not knowing what to expect from the process. Yet, I was forward looking. So she is saying here that the husband had already died, so she didn't know what to expect from the TRC, whether it was going to bring closure or it was going to bring reconciliation, justice, and all the different things that different people might have wanted, but she was forward-looking. That is why she appeared before the TRC. Let's carry on. I persistently or patiently reminded myself that my main purpose in choosing to be a witness, okay, going to quickly underline that as well, because it shows you that she was a witness she is the one who suffered. She knows what happened during the apartheid times. To be a witness at the TRC was to unlock the truth. Now remember, when we read the other source earlier on, we said that the aim of the TRC was to find the truth about what had happened. So what truth was, uh, did she want to unlock? It says, to unlock the truth of how my beloved husband, Mapetla Muhapi, died. So obviously, from reading this sentence, we know that she didn't know how the husband died. All she knows is that she became the widow of the apartheid regime. In other words, that it was the apartheid system that had killed the husband, her husband. But now she needs to know how it happened. And that is the reason why she came before the TRC. I expected to get the whole truth that is also important, that she didn't want the TRC to leave anything out. She wanted to find the whole truth from the TRC process. Now, again, remember, when we were reading the other source, we said that some people wanted that justice. But in this case, from what we've read so far, all she wanted was the whole truth. She just wanted to know how it happened. So, as you can see, different people wanted different things from this process, the TRC process. Let's read on. 
it is true that the TRC was a political process. Okay, I'm going to quickly underline that. It's very important. Okay, it was a political process. So in other words, that was designed by politicians for political reasons. So she does acknowledge the fact that it was a political process, but she obviously set that aside and looked at her own needs and what she wanted to gain from the TRC. And that was to find out what happened or how the husband was killed, to find the whole truth. So she says, it is true that the TRC was a political process forging the concept of nation building. So again, it, this ties in with the source we read um, earlier on about a reconciliation, that the TRC was about nation building and the rainbow nation. It was important for people to come together. But, it, but did it do so at the expense of thousands of African victims and families living in South Africa? Okay, and then she carries on to say, as a doting or loving mother and wife, I welcomed the opportunity after waiting patiently for nearly 20 years to stand before the commission and ask for the truth. So again, she emphasizes the fact that she just wanted the truth. That yes, she does acknowledge the fact that this was a political process driven by politicians um, for nation building, reconciliation and all those other things. But for her, the most important thing was to find the truth. And that is the reason why she came forward. So I hope you have understood that source. Now let's look at the questions that you are likely to get based on that source. Okay, now remember, we've read the source, we've analyzed it, now we are looking at the questions. Question one, why did Nontle Muhapi blame the apartheid regime for the death of her husband? Now you'll remember earlier on, I underlined the part where she says that she became the leader of the apartheid regime. So the question is, why did she blame the apartheid regime for the death of the husband? So again, that is where your own knowledge comes in and the understanding of the source. Let's look at the possible response you can come up with there. She says in the source, she became a widow as a result of the crime committed by the apartheid regime and any other relevant response. So in other words, she, that is the reason why she is blaming the apartheid system or the apartheid regime is because that is when the husband was killed. But then she came before the TRC to find out how he was killed. So that is the comprehension of the source. Now let's move on to the next question. The next question is, what motivated Nantle Muhapi to give her testimony at the TRC hearings? So again, that is extraction of information from the source. Because when we were reading the source, we did look at the reasons why she came before the TRC. She stressed the reason why it was important for her to stand before the TRC because she wanted the whole truth. She wanted to know how the husband had died. I mean, she already knew the husband had died because she was a widow, but she did not know how it happened. And that is what she wanted to find out. And she also did um, acknowledge the fact that the whole process, the whole TRC process was a political process. However, for her personally, she wanted the truth. So let's look at the possible responses there. She wanted to hear the truth about her husband's death, as I've already told you. That was the most important thing for her. And then 1.3 says, quote, two reasons why Nantle Muhapi was critical about the work of the TRC. Now, that is very important. I'm going to quickly circle the word, quote, so you are not just giving your own information here, but you're just extracting information from the source as it is. And another very important thing is to give two reasons. So even if the source has given you three or four reasons, the question is asking you to only give two reasons. 
And another very important thing you need to take note of is the mark allocation. If you look at the mark allocation here, it's 2 times 1 equals 2. That means two reasons, and each reason is worth one mark, and then you get your two marks there. So please make sure that you don't waste time and give more than what is required. So you're giving two reasons why non happy was critical. That's another thing, that she didn't just embrace it, but she was very critical about it as well. Now let's look at the possible responses that she can give there. She claimed that the TRC was a political process. Now remember, I did look at that and we underlined it. I said she acknowledged the fact that the TRC was about reconciliation, about nation building, the rainbow nation. She acknowledged that, and that is why she was critical of it. But she said she took the opportunity because she knew that she was going to gain something for herself, and that something was the truth of how her husband was killed during the apartheid times. So that is the um, critical analysis she gave there. She also says that the TRC promoted nation building and the emergence of a rainbow nation at the expense of human lives. So again, she's saying that the TRC was not that interested in the uh, violation of human rights or how the victims suffered, but what they were interested in was reconciling the different groups that had been fighting during the apartheid times. So that is the criticism of the TRC that she gives. And then, let's read on. She also says the TRC took place without giving due regard to psychological trauma that people underwent and how people actually felt. So that ties in with the previous points as well, that the TRC, because it was a political process that was about nation building, about reconciliation, that they disregarded the psychological effects or the trauma that had been experienced by the people. All that was important for the TRC was to bring people together and build a nation. So I hope you've seen the, the difference between those two sources. One was by a person who was involved in the workings of the TRC, okay, like a commissioner, and then the other one was by a victim who was affected by the TRC. So they both acknowledged that the TRC was controversial, but they obviously gave different views of the whole process. So when we come back, we're going to look at the essay questions you're likely to get. But before that, we'll look at the paragraph question, and then we'll look at the essay questions as well. I hope that has helped you understand how different people viewed the TRC. I'll see you in a few minutes. Welcome back. Now, before the break, we looked at the two written sources, and we looked at the questions you're likely to get on those sources. Now, let's look at a different type of question, still based on the TRC, under the theme, The Road to Democracy in South Africa. Now, this question is a paragraph question. It says, using the information in the relevant sources, I'm going to quickly underline that, that is very important. That means you select your sources carefully. You select the relevant sources and your own knowledge. Now, you'll remember before the break that I said to you, it is very important to look at all these themes we do in history in context of your own knowledge, of your own learning as well. So don't think that you can just walk into the exam without having studied any work, because not all questions you will get in the exam will be comprehension questions. Some of the questions will ask you to analyze, some will ask you to use your own knowledge, so it is very important to know the context as well. Cause and effect are also very important in history. So the thing that you expected to do here is to write a paragraph now remember, when you're writing a paragraph, it's not like writing those short questions we looked at before the break. Now you are writing a short paragraph, coherent sentences. When we did the checklist, we did look at that, that you should be able to write a coherent answer. It's a paragraph, it's not an essay. However, please make sure that you don't write in point form. You write in full sentences in a paragraph form, and 
They've given you a guide here. They're saying of about eight lines. Okay, they're saying of about eight lines. There's been questions before where people have asked, what if my paragraph is more than eight lines? That is not a problem, as long as the information you've given is relevant. But please make sure that you don't write a page long or two pages when the instruction clearly states that the paragraph should be about eight lines or 80 words. Okay, it's a summary, but they're not as strict as in English where they count the number of words. So don't stress if you have a big handwriting and your paragraph ends up being 10 lines. That is still fine, provided that the information you've given is relevant. Now, what are you ex expected to do? You're expected to explain whether the TRC assisted South Africans to come to terms with their past. Now, remember I told you that we were looking at the selected sources. We only analyzed two sources. What you're likely to get in this theme or in every other theme is four different sources. We've only looked at the two sources. But this question here, this paragraph question, is asking you to look at all the sources that you've been given for this theme. And then you are going to use the relevant ones and your own knowledge and explain whether the TRC assisted South Africans to come to terms with the past. So you'll find that some sources will say, yes, the TRC did manage to do that. And then other sources will say, no, it didn't. So this is a skill of selection and the skill of using your own knowledge. So whatever you select, make sure that you are using the relevant information to answer the question. Okay, now let's look at a possible response or responses you might give there to say whether the TRC was able to assist South Africans to come to terms with the past. If you say yes, based on the sources you've selected, then you should say the TRC aimed to address the gross human rights violations. It allowed for the truth to be made known. It gave many family members of victims the closure they needed. Confessions led to forgiveness, though that was not always the case, but we do know that it did that. It promoted healing. It contributed to national unity and reconciliation. It contributed to nation building and the concept of the rainbow nation or any other relevant response, provided that the sources you have selected are relevant. Now, remember I told you that sometimes you'll get sources that are saying, yes, it did assist South Africans to come to terms with the past, and then other sources will say, no, it didn't. Okay, it's all about what you have selected. And then you can say, no, it didn't, and then you must substantiate your response with the relevant examples. So that is how you expected to answer the paragraph question. You take a stance and you use the relevant sources including your own knowledge, to answer the question. I hope that will help you write the paragraph questions. Now, what I'd like us to look at is essay writing, which is slightly different from paragraph writing. Now, before we analyze an, an essay question together, I just want to quickly remind you that an essay consists of an introduction the body, which is divided into different paragraphs, and then the conclusion. Now, in your introduction, it is very important to state the issue or the concept, so give scope of what you're talking about without using personal pronouns, and then give the direction your argument is going to take. So if, for example, the question is, to what extent? I need to see the extent in the introduction. You need to be able to say to a large extent or to some extent or to a small extent. Please don't leave that till the conclusion because then the person reading your essay will not know where the argument is going. So you need to state exactly what the argument is about right from the beginning. So it is important to do that in your introduction. And in some cases, you'll get questions that ask you, do you agree? So you'll get a statement and say, do you agree with the above statement? 
So in your introduction, I need to see whether you agree or not without you saying, I agree. Remember, we never use personal pronouns in history. It's very important. So you can say things like, it is evident, or it can be argued that you know, that was the case. Okay, so now let's look at the question, essay question from the exemplar paper, as I said to you before, we are looking at the uh, 2014 paper two exemplar. Now, in this question, you're given a statement. The upsurge of violence in the 1990s, remember, we're still looking at the road to democracy in South Africa. So it says the upsurge of uh, violence in the 1990s, I'm go quickly going to underline the 1990s, because that tells you the parameters, that you are not looking at the violence in the 1980s, but the 1990s, was a desperate attempt by right wing, again, that is a very important thing, going to use a different color there. It was a desperate attempt by right-wing political organizations to derail okay, the process of negotiations. So in other words, they were trying to stop the negotiations from carrying on. Okay, They were trying to derail the process of negotiations. That is the given statement. And then the question is, do you agree with this statement? Now, remember earlier on I did uh, say to you, you are likely to get a question asking you whether you agree or not. You have to state in your introduction whether you agree or not without using personal pronouns. So do you agree with this statement? Use relevant examples to support your answer. Now, in this case, because this is a, a, an essay now, you are not using the sources. Remember the sources we dealt with were on the TRC anyway. They were not on the violence of the 1990s. So you are using your own knowledge. So these relevant examples that are going to be used to support your argument come from your own knowledge. So again, that is why it is very important to learn your work. But please make sure that you give specific examples because you don't want to end up with a vague answer that is just a narrative instead of an argument. So again, we're going to look at the possible responses you are likely to get from this type of question. Okay, now candidates need to indicate whether or not they agree. That is the direction that I, I, I spoke to you about, that you need to take a position and show how the violence negatively affected and hindered the negotiation process in South Africa in the 1990s. If candidates disagree with the statement, they must substantiate their response Okay, I'm going to quickly underline that. It's very important to substantiate their response with relevant examples. Again, these examples come from your own knowledge. So please make sure that you don't just make things up. And if you agree with the statement, you need to include the following aspects in your response. So the main aspects that you will include in your response are Okay, the introduction, you need to take a stance, as I've already told you, and indicate the various challenges that led to the breakdown in the negotiation process. You already know that. And then, I'm not going to read everything here, because this comes from your own studying. This is how you're going to elaborate. So in other words, these are the relevant examples I spoke to you about. These examples you are going to give to support your argument. So you are going to look at the talk talks about talks, that is the brief background, the Pretoria talks, and the Hortescue Minute, and then look at the actual formal negotiations, Codesa 1 and Codesa 2, and how those were disrupted by the different massacres like Buibatong and Bisho and so on. And then you look at the sunset clause, which is very important. And then, once you've given all that information, so in other words, you need to know all the information pertaining to the 1990s to 1994, the road to democracy in South Africa, how that came about. So you will look at all the problems that were faced by the different political parties that were part of the negotiation process. And then, in your conclusion, you then you need to tie up the argument with a relevant conclusion. So your argument is very similar to the introduction, because remember, in the introduction you're saying 
this is what I'm going to do without using personal pronouns. And then in the conclusion, you are saying, this is what I have done. Please don't include new ideas in the conclusion. If there is anything, if there are any facts that have not been discussed in the body of your essay, they should not be in the conclusion because the conclusion is there to, let me quickly underline that for you, to tie up the argument. So in other words, you are summarizing everything you've discussed before. Make sure that there is no new information. And also, in the body of your essay, before you write the conclusion, it is very important to write one idea in one paragraph. And then you show how that example that you've given relates to the question. So it's very important to give relevant information to answer the question. Because remember, the whole purpose of an essay is to argue. You are not just telling a story. You are not just repeating what is in your note, but you are arguing. I hope that has helped you and that you are going to do very well in your exams. And that's it for today. Good luck.